We are about 30 minutes away from boarding the Foolish and Depth submersible Bakunawa to dive to 10,820 metres in Horizon Deep, which is the second deepest place on Earth in the Tonga Trench in the South Pacific. Bridge, bridge, yes sir. Yes sir, bridge. Yeah, permission to go south in pocket. Very light. The purpose of the dive is that we are trying to map the biodiversity of an entire train system, from the very top to the very bottom. Bridge, bridge, SO, that's sub in the pocket. The science is important in this because we can't just understand the oceans and gain a sense of international stewardship of the oceans if we only ever study the shallow end. Yeah, we are ready for the crew. Pilot and co-pilot on their way out here. This is not the first time I've dove to over 10,000 metres, but it's a psychological one. Cheers, fellas. Have an awesome dive. It's no different from diving to a thousand metres, except for it takes longer to get there and longer to get back. And that's easy to say, but it totally is different. I can't really articulate why it's different. It just feels very, very different. Zeno, Baku, handrails clear, swimmer clear, all lines clear, clear to dive, pumping in. And now that we've cleared the 200 metre mark, we are in what is often referred to as the twilight zone and between 200 and 1,000 metres, the amount of natural ambient light is extremely low. The dive today will take about three and a half hours to get down. Then we're going to try and do between three and four hours on the bottom. Yeah, so this is the second deepest place on the planet. So I just can't say there's many people have done this. It's uh, quite a privilege to be a part of. I would say this is the deepest scientific dive ever done. 10,700. Should see the bottom on the altimeter no less than the next 40 meters. Uh, water quality is surprisingly not good. And we can see the bottom. There it is. Rising deep. Second deepest point on Earth. The final depth of the dive was 10,805 meters. Uh, what we found was a desolate environment that had very little signs of life, very little diversity. It's very flat, isn't it? What colour would you call, describe this as? This is almost like, almost clay, kind of white colour. The difference between the deepest point and the 10,000 metre dive, it didn't appear to be that same instability, which makes kind of sense because the 10,000 metre dive was on the slopes. But the interesting thing is that it doesn't look like the 10,000 metre dives we've done in the Philippine Trench or Mariana Trench. I don't think I've ever seen such a lifeless place. <laughs> it's just incomprehensibly large volumes of sediment just being slowly contorted over time. It's not necessarily a, a negative result. It's fascinating. Something's changed. So now we're just going to try and dig through it and work out what it is that's changed. Absence is as interesting as presence. Just perhaps slightly less immediately gratifying. But it's fascinating why there's absolutely nothing here. Surface, Baku. Surface, weight, release. So we dropped the weights, came up. After that point, that's always the bit where it's, all the adrenaline goes because you've done the job and you're just flowing back to the surface. And then by the time you get to the surface, you're half asleep. Zeno, Zeno, Baku on surface. Welcome back. And then you hit the surface, and that wakes you up. And then someone sprays a bottle of champagne in your face. And that really wakes you up. It was a very long day, very, very good dive. Uh, the submarine performed brilliantly. Not a huge amount of life, I must admit. Everything that is there is very, very small. The horizon deep is desolate, is how I would describe it. Desolate is maybe a bit harsh for it. It's, it's, it's like being in a desert at night. Perfect dive. Second deepest place on the planet. Mm -hmm.